Well, there's no doubt that WikiLeaks is benefiting from the cutbacks in traditional journalism. A lot of uh, traditional outlets no longer have the investigative teams. They no longer assign reporters to cover these very difficult stories. So theoretically, whistleblowers have fewer places to turn to, and WikiLeaks may benefit from this. Julian Assange has primarily relied on donations, but he's also toyed with different models to raise money because he hasn't been getting enough to keep up with the ambition of the website. For example, he tried to auction off a bunch of uh, inside information about Venezuela to the highest bidder, but that got nowhere. He is also now toying with the idea of, su of subscription model, where high-paying subscribers will get the first look at the next drop. Now this raises its own problems because he's presumably targeting a big financial institution. Bank of America has been cited specifically. So whatever information these uh, subscribers receive could be cast as inside information, and if they act on it, they could wind up in jail. What will be interesting is how the public takes to this. By comparison, the embassy cable drop seems a lot of gossip, frivolous, enjoyable. This may be to the public like a lot of just sort of regulatory filings, and it may be too much to sift through. I think Julian Assange has made a tremendous mistake by becoming the story himself. And for one thing, any whistleblower does not want to be eclipsed by the media outlet that's going to run the story. Visit thedeal.com slash magazine for more on the future of WikiLeaks and our look back at 2010, the year in dealmaking.